Just two weeks ago, President Biden announced an executive order that would suspend asylum rights when migration surges past 2,500 migrants a day. And today, President Biden announcing new initiatives that would give mass amnesty to half a million undocumented immigrants married to U.S. citizens. This comes after an illegal migrant from El Salvador was arrested for raping and killing a 37-year-old Maryland mom of five. Rachel Morin. For more on this, I want to welcome in Oklahoma Senator James Lankford this morning. Good morning, Senator. Good morning to you. So what's your reaction to the president's new rules to protect undocumented immigrants married to U.S. citizens from deportation? So it's the side by side that's the worst of this is that he announces he's going to close down the border if it gets to high numbers, which he has not done. They've exceeded those numbers day after day since his executive order. So that was all just public show, but he's actually not enforcing that. And then he waits and announces, oh, and we're also going to allow half a million people that are in the country illegally to now get a path to citizenship, which is just a big flag to everyone internationally to say, get into the country as fast as you can because we're going to give you citizenship. This mm -hmm. has been the challenge of Biden all along. He's done 94, now 95 executive orders, opening the border up and inviting more people to come. And then we'll announce that he's gonna close the border down and actually does not. So the suspect charged with Rachel Morin's murder was wanted for murdering a woman in El Salvador as well. That's why he fled his country and then crossed into ours illegally at the southern border, as you know. And this isn't the first time a criminal has found his way into our country. In January alone, ICE arrested 100 illegal migrants in just a seven-day period, all of them facing charges ranging from sexual assault, rape, murder, and some having child pornography. So to issue this new massive immigration relief the same week Rachel's murder is arrested, it just seems pretty out of touch, Senator. It is out of touch, and it's something I've said all along for years. I've said we don't know if people are fleeing from the law or if they're fleeing from poverty. We don't know because they're not checking it. They're not evaluating it. Any criminal check that they're doing for individuals are actually at the end of the process, years after they've been in the country, rather than at the very beginning. This is one of the things that I fought for was to have that criminal check at the very beginning. And so we can turn people around immediately rather than releasing them in the country. Again, last week, uh, your network widely uh, disseminated the information about eight ISIS suspected individuals that President Biden had allowed into the country, even welcomed into the country. Eight Biden folks, if you want to go back a few months before that, Al-Shabaab terrorists were in the country that they were then trying to be able to chase down because they had allowed them into the country. This is the Biden pattern allow as many people as want to be able to come into the border day after day after day. And then if we find out there's a problem, we'll go check it later. But that doesn't help for the families of individuals that have had a loved one murdered. That's not good news to them. That's terrible news to them. Yeah. And those eight ISIS terrorists were plotting on how to build bombs and how to attack our country from within. So Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre had her first official briefing in three weeks. She was asked about the southern border and she says Biden is focused on making immigration, and I'm quoting her here, more fairer. Take a listen. Yes, the president has been very clear in making sure that and saying that we need a legislative solution. But he also said when he's talked about the executive action that he recently took, uh, that in weeks ahead, he's going to speak uh, on how we can make our immigration system more fairer uh, and more just. So he will have more to say uh, on that. I, obviously, we don't have any policy announcement announcement to make at this time. But the president is certainly going to continue uh, to address what we're seeing at the border, uh, the challenges at the border. The president has taken this very seriously. He wants to see action. He wants to see a bipartisan legislation move towards that. But we haven't uh, we haven't seen that. Yeah, I wonder how Lake and Riley or Rachel Morin's families would feel about how making it more fairer. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, it's painful, but that has been where he's been since day one. As you recall, day one of this White House, they announced they're no longer going to do border wall construction. They're going to take away a remaining Mexico policy. They're going to eliminate all the agreements between Central America and the United States to be able to limit the flow of migrants. Day after day, they've said that basically what Trump did was mean, and so now I'm going to open the border up. What I have said over and over again to this this administration is following the law is not mean. Following the law is the law. We are a nation of a rule of law. And many of these folks are trying to flee from countries where law is not enforced. And mm -hmm. then they're fleeing to this country and this president saying we're not going to enforce the law either. So as crime increases, as murders increase, as all these problems that happen, 
These are a direct result of a president saying, well, I'm going to try to do something fair for individuals. Well, let's do something fair for the American people. That's what we need to do is to make the law fair for them. And right for them as well. Pivoting now to the two-year anniversary of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. So just days away, you recently introduced the Conscious Protection Act last week that protects health care providers that refuse to participate in abortions. Do you see this passing? And is there a concern ahead of November of where voters stand with abortion policies? Well, this one should be universal. This one shouldn't be an issue uh, across the United States. Uh, it is the simple presence of if an individual has a conscience, a moral objection to abortion, they're a health care provider at any level of a health care provider, and they say, I don't want to participate in the taking of life. I came into medicine to heal and protect life, not take life. That person should not be required by their employer to perform an abortion. This is basic American. You have a belief, you are able to live your beliefs in America. What the Biden administration is currently saying is we're not going to enforce uh, uh, conscience protections. By the way, it's already the law of the United States, not just constitutionally protecting mm -hmm. the First Amendment. It's already the law that you have conscience protections of your health provider. But what this administration is doing is they're saying we're not going to enforce the law. We're just going to look away. And if employers want to compel people against their conscience to perform an abortion, we're going to allow them to do that. That even under a threat of being fired, we're going to allow them to do that because the government under Biden has a different belief than the individuals. We as a nation are founded on this basic principle. I have a belief. I can live my belief. It doesn't have to line up with the government's belief. So I'm bringing that to the floor today to be able to bring in and say this doesn't take away one abortion in America. But what it does say is if you're a health care provider, you are not compelled to be able to take life when you went into health care to protect it. It makes sense. All right, Senator James Langford, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you.